Good morning, good morning. I want to thank the Lord for giving me, giving me this privilege so that we can share from the Word of God. Today's topic is the topic I'm very passionate about, and I'm excited to share it with you. I pray that the Lord will um, help me to share it so that it can come to you with the same power and force that is there in my heart. Uh, let's go to Genesis 21, verse 19. Bible says, Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. The title of my presentation this morning is The COVID-19 Paradigm Shift. The COVID-19 Paradigm Shift. I want us to lay the background to today's presentation by looking at Genesis 21. Now, J Genesis 21 talks about uh, Genesis 21. It's talking about uh, the birth of Isaac. Isaac is um, born because the Bible says the Lord was gracious to Sarah and he, he visited Sarah and Sarah got a son. Now, when the, son, when the son was born, the Bible says Abraham was very excited and he threw a party to celebrate the arrival of the son in the home. Now, the Bible introduces that very interesting context, but Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar, the Egyptian, had born to Isaac was mocking. And so she said to Abraham, get rid of that slave woman and her son. For that slave woman will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. Now, the Bible says this matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, don't be distressed. Just send the boy away and I will make him to be a great nation because he is the offspring. Now, that sets the context of what I'm going to read. Now, the Bible says early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulder and then sent her off with a boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. That is significant. I'll come to that in a moment. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down about a bow shot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of the Lord called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Leave the boy up and take him by the hand, for I'll make him into a, into a great nation. And comes our verse. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy to drink. Then the Bible says God was, was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and he became an archer. Now, my brother, my sister, I want us to focus a little bit about Hagar. Hagar was a slave of Sarah, as you very well know. What do we know about slaves? Slaves are not paid to think. Slaves are not paid to have independent thoughts. In fact, slaves are paid to check their brain, to put their brains on neutral and follow whatever their masters or mistresses, in this case, tell them to the latter. So Hagar is a slave of, uh, of Sarah. And so when Sarah told her, for example, I want you to go and sleep with uh, Abraham, she does not ask any questions. All she does is say, yes, madam, slaves are not paid to think. And therefore, slavery, I, I dare say, is not only physical, it is mental. Because you remember, for example, uh, you know, the, the children of Israel were slaves. And they were, yes, they were told that they were going to a land which was land full of milk and honey, but now there's a problem. How can a slave who has never thought any original thought in their lives know how to you know, how to survive and thrive in that land. Because you see, when you have a land that is full of milk, for you to get milk, you must know how to rear cows. For you to get honey, you must know how to look after bees. But now, 
probably that's why it took uh, 40 years for, you know, for God to break that mental slavery. Somebody says it's easy for God to remove you and die, for God to remove you and die from Canaan, but it, it, it takes a long, long, long time to, re to remove e Egypt from their minds. And so that's where we find this, uh, the, the children of Israel. Not, you know, they are just slaves. So we look at Hagar here. So when she goes away, Abraham puts food on her. You know, he puts, uh, he gives her food and bread and he tells her to go. Go, in other words, you are depending on me, total dependence on me. Now, in other words, Hagar, you need a paradigm shift so that you can know how to survive in the desert and you can navigate your future. And so we find her wandering and wandering. And you know, my brothers and sisters, this is where I find the world and especially the continent of Africa. Since our colonial masters left, many of us, yes, we, may, we got independence and we, you know, we, we thump ourselves on the chest and we talk about our sovereignty. Yes, it may have been political independence, but in terms of uh, intellectual and political and economical independence, we are still dependent on the West. And therefore, so probably the, this, uh, the COVID-19 paradigm shift, this one to me has thrown us in the desert and many of us are wandering in the desert. And what we'll do with this, uh, it's a crisis, but it's also an opportunity. You see, they say the Chinese uh, sign, you know, character, I don't know much about Chinese, uh, for opportunity and crisis are the same. This could be a crisis or this may be a wake up call, a paradigm shift that if we seize will lead us to move to greater heights as a people and as individuals. What is the current reality? For example, most of our countries, we depend on external loans for, to balance our budget every year. Our budgets are in billions and trillions, as, uh, as in the case of Kenya, but we cannot be able to meet the shortfalls. So what do we do? We go to the West. We go to the East. We depend on other people to sustain us. But I'm praying that um, we'll have a COVID-19 paradigm shift where we'll focus our attention not on external financing, but we'll, our eyes will be opened. Our eyes will be opened during this crisis to seize the opportunity where we'll start spotting it internal resources that are trapped between the ears of our people. For example, the novel Mpesa was actually, was actually, you know, invented, innovated by some Kenyans here. In other words, we have a lot of resources in Africa. And let me ask you, by the way, why do people from the East, from the West, why do they come to Africa? In fact, somebody described Africa as the last frontier. And therefore, we need to have our eyes opened like Hagar so that we may start seeing the resources that God has put here in our countries, the resources that God has put in our neighborhood, the resources that the Lord has given us. The other reality is when you look at the health systems. Now, my brother, my sister, there's something we need to realize that uh, when the political class and the rich people in our country get sick, they take their the patients to India, to London, to South Africa, and lately to India. And so we use billions of money seeking for medical, medical assistance and medical treatment. But now there's something I want you to notice. Right now, nobody can fly out of this country. So we are in the, out of this country and in the, from the African countries, nobody can go outside. And so we are in this thing together. Even though I have all the money, even though I have all billions, if I get sick, I will go to the same hospitals, to the whole, same health centers. And therefore, probably the COVID-19 paradigm shift is where we need now to focus on developing our own health systems. 
health systems that will cater for the health needs of all our citizens, quality health systems. When we go to the educational sector at the moment, we are all dependent on an obsolete education systems. Check, all, check this all around. Where we train people to be employees, to be employed. Clerks, secretaries, accountants, and etc., uh, etc. Et we treat people to be employed. As uh, Robert Kiyos Kiyosaki laments, is that uh, many people are trained. Uh, actually, many, uh, he says that uh, the students who get A's, A students, are trained to work for C students. Because A students are usually the brilliant, the C students are usually the entrepreneurs, the business people. So A students work for C students. But probably we need to retool, to re rethink our educational system and start training our people to be entrepreneurs. Now, many of us, again, the reality, we depend on exported food to meet our food security especially in Africa. But probably time has come for us to rethink our the traditional foods and go back to the original foods. Because uh, as we depend on these refined foods, they come with all the medical challenges. The COVID-19 paradigm shift is calling us to start thinking how we can have our own food security. Now, there's something also very interesting. We need, again, to rethink our, I'll call it our religion. Many of us have been dependent on the hierarchies. Look at all missionary, missionary-oriented religions. I remember the other day, the Pope, and this goes across the board, told people because they could not go for confession to the priest because of the COVID-19, they need to talk directly to God so that they can get their food, their sins forgiven. In other words, we need to move our religion, our spirituality from a priest or pastor building centered religion to a God dependent, Christ centered, spirit empowered, Bible based spirituality where we go back to the basics we start going on our knees we start reading the bible and trusting the holy spirit to interpret the word of god for us and there's another area where the reality is most of us we depend on clubs and uh, other you know groups and networks to link up with other people but the COVID-19 paradigm shift is calling us to move away from uh, the people outside. Yes, we need them. And to take our minds back to our families. That a time has come where we need now to spend time with that spouse, start working on that conversation. A time has come for us to start looking into the eyes of our children and start parenting them. In other words, I'm saying, in this time when we are wandering in this desert, may God open our eyes, is my prayer in Jesus' name, so that we may see possibilities in this crisis. And I'm praying that um, God will give us the COVID-19 paradigm shift that will move us away from living in a world of confusion and illusion and dependency on human beings and human systems where we'll take our attention back to God and depend on God and live guided by the principles of the kingdom of God. May God bless, bless you today as you have the COVID-19 Paradigm shift is my prayer for you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.